This woman wasted no time in finding herself a boyfriend after her husband passed away. But her choice on man was put into question when he destroyed her life. She has no money, her family is sick of the situation, but still she continues defending him because he is the priority in her life. Someone who's actively trying to destroy it. You want to know what bothers me, so you want to talk, let's talk, okay? Sabrina got married to her husband and were together for 14 years. After he passed away, she felt lonely, so she went to Match.com and two months later, as in after her husband died, she found the one, James Conner. James has an accent, kind of a French accent. A little bit maybe German, but mostly French. Oh, but there's a reason for the accent. James was born in Germany, but his parents moved to the USA when he was a baby. And later he moved to England, where he currently works on the London Bridge as a civil engineer. He's also a private contractor and has a home in LA that he owns. California is not cheap. So the combination of places made his accent sound like a Nigerian guy. <laughs> Listen, kind of like that lady from Technotronic. She's from Congo Republic and later moved to Belgium. I legit thought she was from Boston. Get the party going on the dance floor. It can happen, okay? So after a week of talking on the phone, Sabrina was already in love with James. Again, they met two months after the husband died. I don't know the lady, nor I know how the marriage was, but it seems unnecessarily rushed. While they are both in love and want to get married, only James had some problems. He, being a civil engineer working on the London Bridge, needs money from Sabrina to finish the project and pay all his people. Sounds like a shitty contractor to me, but to Sabrina, he's just a man in need. James asked me for money three weeks after we met online. James sent me an invoice from the company he needed to purchase the supplies from. It looked legit to me. Sure, looks legit, but why is that your problem? Why is a professional asking for money instead of talking to the city officials to help finance the damn project? Later on, James told me that the bank would not let him make draws off of this deposit. I got a weird sick feeling in my stomach. Yeah, but did she listen to that tiny voice in her head? Nope. She is too desperate to listen to a reality check. James kept asking for more money, claiming he didn't have a bank account in the UK, the providers were garbage, he was looking at jail time, you know, all the excuses. Sabrina believed him in everything he will say to her, which makes this so annoying. Like the psychologist said some videos back, create a journal, write everything down. What would Sabrina's journal will look like? I met a man on a dating app two months after my husband passed away. I was saying I love you by the week of knowing this man. And less than a week after, he was asking me for money. He is an engineer working for the city of London, but he's asking me to finance his work. We just met. Reading it once, maybe still in denial. Reading it twice, you kinda wanna know if there's a project in London and search for his name online. By the third time, you will be shocked at how you fell for something like that. It actually works. He was working with a gentleman named Michael in Nigeria as he was concerned about his identity in the United Kingdom. Why? What about his identity in the UK? Is he a spy? If he works for the city, they have to make a contract with all the identity he wants to conceal. This makes no sense. They uh, they really say the dumbest, most outrageous things and people still believe them. Amazing. $265,000 amazing. Is he worth it? Yes. It was the words. It was um, a lot of it was the things that he said. His voice, that he's very much in love with me. Words are nice, but she's financing this dude's entire life. Doesn't seem very equal to me. She doesn't care. She's happy receiving crumbs and eating them as if it's a feast. And again, the question was, why do you love him? And it's just a bunch of dumb teenager descriptors and because he loves me. So he said, I love you first to test the waters. Remember, the scammers need to know the victim is secure and under their control before asking for money. And she was. Sabrina knows he's rich and important, but that is it. She was asked, why don't you just buy a ticket to London? But she didn't know where James lived. She knows nothing about this guy. 
except for the rich part. Oba James had tried to visit the USA, but every time he tried, he got arrested, he was beaten up for some reason. The police won't let him. Excuses after excuses. That, that seemed like an unstable person to spend the rest of your days, if you ask me. But he's handsome and rich, so Sabrina is just powering through. I don't believe I'm being scammed, and I do believe that James is real. She has looked into some of the claims James has made, like for example being jailed for not paying suppliers. That doesn't happen. He could be sued, but not jailed. She knows this, but still believes James in everything. This means she has to do some serious mental gymnastics to protect the guy. That sounds more like she's protecting her ego rather than claiming everything James has said as a reality. She is invested and doesn't want to be told she made a bad decision. Well, whatever, she's blinded by him or her ego. I want to know what the family thinks about what she's doing. A five-year-old wouldn't believe this garbage. I've done everything I can to prove to my mother that he's not real. Sarah was thinking of 5150, her mother, but she's not a threat to anyone or herself. And that's a problem because she is. Sabrina is blindly giving all her money to a stranger and cannot seem to stop. Sarah took a copy of James's passport to the police to verify his identity, and the police told her this dude did not exist. She is putting all the work, but Sabrina seems to not give a single crap about what her family thinks. When she told us about the $170,000, I was pregnant. We were supposed to go baby shower shopping. It was Sarah's time to shine and be happy her baby was about to be born, but after finding her mom had sent this human an absurd amount of money, they had to change plans. Sarah and Sean managed to contact James and said, we know you're a scammer, but hey, how about we pay for a ticket so Sabrina can meet you there? James was into it until he started to backpedal, saying, Well, I have so many issues here. I don't think it would be a good idea for Sabrina to meddle. Oh my god, and then the passport. There's some lady in the background. I mean, her daughter called her dumb. I might as well. Sabrina says James had to tamper it to conceal his identity. But according to Homeland Security, that's a bunch of bullshit. My mom asked my husband, Sean, to pretend that he was her employer so my mother could get a loan and refinance. They thought it was for her to survive, but they later knew it was all for James. It, it's sick! So she knows she's lying for him, but doesn't care about her son-in-law's work. It could jeopardize it. She's only thinking about herself, not even her granddaughter matters. This goes beyond cold mentality. You cannot be so callous as to torpedo your family to get laid, because that's what it is. A week and she loves him? No, she is just horny. Let's just cut everything short. The company he works for doesn't know who the F James is, nor they are working on a bridge. The passport is a fake, every document was forged, she doesn't care. Sabrina has a conversation with James and she tells him she is with Dr. Phil and he is going to pay for the ticket for him to come home to the USA, but James starts gaslighting her. How dare you not say you were going to meet Dr. Phil, my anonymity and such treating her like garbage, but she loves that because she still wants to meet him. Long story short, after the proof is on the table with no irrefutable doubt that James does not exist, Dr. Phil asks her if she really understands that this was all a scam. I truly believe that this, this is a scam. She looks away. Dr. Phil is worried, as we all are. She repeats it, looking straight into Dr. Phil's eyes this time. I don't know. I found no update to this, but I sure hope she stopped with this nonsense. What do you think about this? Sabrina was a sneezed away from losing her family. They are close to be done with her, and of course they are. After being there with her and supporting her, that's how they are paid? To be in the backseat? Hell, I don't think Sabrina had them in the same car, to be honest. I hope this was a wake-up call and she can apologize and make amends so she can finally enjoy her granddaughter and be the grandmother that kid deserves. Don't forget to subscribe to join the deception ship. Also, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. It really helps. I hope you had a fantastic day or night and I will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.